Hey, hey, folks, here we are. We might be drunk. We're doing it. We had a crazy weekend, so we're capping it off with a little cafe au lait. I had, uh, I had, a, little, I had a few too many last night, even. So did I. What did you drink? I just had a couple of uh, McAllen's with, uh, with Dan, the bartender at uh, the cellar. Oh, nice. Fat Black. Yeah, it's my childhood friend. That's crazy. Yeah. Funny how it all comes back. New York, we all talk about this yeah. big city that never sleeps. I see the same people. All day long, every day. Yeah, the city is, uh, it, it's so hard. It's such a great city. It's hard not to drink. I know. I guess I know. if your life is shit, you drink, or if your life is good, you drink. But <laughs> that's true. There's just bright lights. It's late. And I'm like, oh, that's a cool bar. I'm going to go in there. I know. And the night, that crisp night autumn air is great in New York, that October weather. Yeah. And uh, all your friends are around. You had a couple good sets. Give me a highball. Yeah. It's great. In the groans. Oh yeah, and we, you know, we pretty much drink for free over there, so it's hard not to get a nice cocktail. It's tough. Yeah, guess who I saw walking down? Me and the lady took a stroll because the the village during Halloween, the decorations are out. It's nutty. It's great, and everyone's a fucking director now. Do you see everyone? <laughs> they take their phone out. They're like, "Let me get this." These. Yes, and you're like, "Okay, now you're blocking the walkway." Exactly. Some kids trying to look at the the scary ghost, and there's a guy, <laughs> Fellini. Remember Carlin <laughs> Federico Fellini? Federico out there. fucking Fellini. <laughs> <laughs> but I see a guy with white hair and a kid on his shoulders, and he's going, "Look at that, Daddy! Look at that!" And the kid's up there. Guess who it was? Who? Alec Baldwin. Oh, how about that? Yeah. I see him in my neighborhood all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great dad. And uh, I said, what are you, shooting the shit? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> shooting joke. But uh, <laughs> I went, oh, wow. And I, I just instinctively waved. And he looked at me like, fuck off. And then kept walking. Yeah. It doesn't sound like a great person. Well, I think he's out <laughs> he needs there. Some, he needs son. some press. Yeah. That's true. That's true. This guy's got a podcast where he's going to... Everyone's got a podcast now where you're like, I saw a famous person. Was he nice? Nah. Yeah, but I don't blame him. What's he going to do? Like, it. hey, he didn't even know who I was, so no, I'm waving at him. You get people like, saying hi to you sometimes and like... That's you know, true. You always try to be nice, but every once in a while they catch you at a bad moment. Yeah. I was having a fight with my mom on the phone and some yes. guy... Yes! Some guy was like sam i was i was like what the fuck yeah. and, and some guys like sam i was like i was like and he's like oh, okay <laughs> but that's yeah. like that's pretty good for mid-fight that's pretty good that's yeah fun. that's tough to do because i was hard to airport. take a picture mid-fight oh. listen you fucking inconsiderate hold on <laughs> that's all they want is the photo uh, i had i was at the airport and i had a flight fuck up i had to call delta which is always a nightmare and Never. i'm on the phone with you delta. got status you go right through i go right through but you're still like Oh, uh, my sky number is this, and my flight time was that. I'm doing all that shit. And the guy was like, oh, man, holy shit. I listen to you all the time. We might be drunk. Yeah. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, because I, I couldn't hear the lady. So he hated me. <laughs> but now he'll go off and tell everybody, oh, I met him once, and he fucking yelled at me. That is, it is funny to get recognized at a bad point. I know, I know. Because that's because you are Alec Baldwin. That is your whole life. Exactly. And I think what Alec Baldwin was saying was like, no photo, like don't even try. Also, he's had he's one of those dudes that has had too many kids at too late a point in his life. Yes. That you, this is the point of your life. You should be more restful. Yes. He's got a, a manslaughter charge and <laughs> more kids. You're not sleeping as well as you. Plus, New York, there's noise. Yeah. We're in the same neighborhood. There's a lot of noise. That's true. I don't know what's worse, the eight kids or the manslaughter charge. It's it's a toss-up. <laughs> Plus, the Hilaria Baldwin is no joke. That was rough. Hilaria. I mean, the yogi, the yogi's already, oh, like, it can go either way. Totally. You can be, like, earthy and kind of kind, or you can just be, like, all oh, right, enough about granola. Just yes. fucking just have you know. another kid already. Yeah, and then it's also I saw Billy Joel on Friday and Whoa. he and he's another one who has he brought his kids out yeah. and, and they're way too young for how old he oh, is. Oh yeah. One of them was six. Whoa. He's, I think seventy four. Wait, where did you see Billy Joel? The garden. Oh, you saw him perform? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh girlfriend's birthday. She wanted to see Billy Joel, so the garden hooked it up. Hell yeah! Because wait, when did this come out? Is this? Do I still have time to promote my date? Uh, this will be November. Wait a minute! I never thought about this. So you're playing there, so you get tickets. Well, I try not to abuse it, but they, you know, they're That's good to know. I'm doing the beacon. I'm going to try to get an affiliate, some... baby. November fifth, right 
Oh, uh, never mind. Ah. Uh, well, it was a great night. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, it sold out. Yes. Here, here. But, Congratulations. Uh, you yeah, know. Lack, 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 lack. <laughs> you ought to know by Dude, now. His voice is still good. Oh, yeah. He's great. Ran into our boy Brian Koppelman at the show. Hey. Who told me that he, Brian Koppelman, if you don't know, creator of Billions, wrote Rounders. Oh, yeah. Amazing screenwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, but he he tells me, you know, my first date with my now wife of 30 years was to see Billy Joel, and she stood me up an hour before the show. And now we're going back to see her. Wow. To see him together now. What a comeuppance. Yeah. Like, I don't care how long it takes, bitch. I'm getting you to that concert. But, uh, no, he's amazing, dude. Oh, yeah. I saw him live at Bonnaroo. And you're like, Bonnaroo is not really his spot, and he owned it. He had the best show. He was, was funny, too. Incredible. Oh, yeah? He had a story where, yeah, he said he talked about meeting Keith Richards on the street, and Keith Richards getting mobbed by paparazzi or whatever, and then as he's walking by, he goes, uh, he goes, Keith, uh, Billy Joel, and Keith Richards looked at him like, oh. Huh. Like, like, that's not what he thought he'd look like? Right, right. Like a little self-deprecation from Billy Joel. I liked it. I know? love it. Not yeah. to mention the, you know, you can't have a picket fence in his neighborhood because he will run it over. <laughs> <laughs> he really liked to get Not behind more. the wheel. He's sober for sure. Oh, okay, good. Oh, dude, he's come on. But he would let. I mean, legendary drunk. I'd love to get him on here. Damn, that would be a, that would be an epic download episode. Oh. Billy Billy Joel falls off. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring in a little p a keyboard. I'll just let him go. <laughs> well, the funniest part is like family singing along to his just depressing lyrics. His lyrics are so fucking sad. Yeah, but people sing along like as if you know. And John is a real estate novelist. Yes. Which, by the way, what the fuck is a real estate novelist? Oh, good. Do point. you guys know what that is? I never even thought about that. Who never had time for a wife. Yeah. He's sitting with Davy, who's still in the Navy, Navy, and he's with their kids, who probably will It'll be, be for, for life. life. I'm like, that's not... <laughs> that's not good Not news. cheerful. No. What is it? Sounds like a woman to me. Oh, she's always a woman to me. Yeah. It's controversial now. <laughs> but, yeah, you gotta change that lyric. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's about Chaz Bono. <laughs> but, yeah. Hell of an artist, yeah. and still kicking. And I think he has a residency; like he does oh, yeah. ten a year or whatever at the so garden. Much. It's amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. he and he crushed it. He it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it's awesome that every song is a hit. Yes, and then and he'll like he no matter how famous you get, he'll kind of, there's a little bit where he's like, "There's a little song called Vienna, didn't make the charts when it came out." I'm like, "Ooh, he's still kind of pissed about it." Yeah, you know? he's bitter. Good for him. But it's like you're kind of like, "Holy shit, that wasn't a hit." I know, I know, they're all great. But Saba Bonnero, it was like Kendrick Lamar, Florence and the Machine, Mumford wow. and Sons. It was all these big, hot, cool, fun artists. And then he came out at the end and blew them all off the table. I partied with Mumford and Sons one night. Really? They were cool as fuck. Yeah, they were awesome. I remember one of them was like, he's, he's like, you know, when you're like week two on the road and you're on your knees and you're blowing a line off the seat. I was like, I think we're doing the road differently. <laughs> <laughs> you guys go hard. Yeah, especially because their music is kind of somber. That's how it always goes, though. That's true. Clean comedian might murder you. Good point. Fucking Peter, Paul, and Mary. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> yeah, Richard Marks. I heard he liked the, the heroin <laughs> and the hookers. Well, Karen Carpenter, that's some dark shit, right? What was her thing? She she uh, starved herself to death. What? Isn't that right, Karen Carpenter? I know she was anorexic. Top, but that's what it was, yeah. She died of that, though. Whoa, she went I all mean, the way. You see, yeah. End of the line. Heart failure. Yeah, but that's from the That's from not eating. Always impressed when an American cannot eat. Good it for is. her. It is. Everyone else goes the other way. It's not our specialty. No, no. I mean, we have another musician, Meatloaf. Yeah. <laughs> named after food. It's a good point. Yeah. It's a good point, yeah. And he was a big guy. Wow. Man, look how thin she is. Look sad. at that. Yikes. Such a talent, too. I know. Just, Todd Haynes made a movie about her. And he just used dolls to do the whole movie. Oh, damn. It's weird as hell. It's pretty cool. Yikes. Dark. Dolls. Yeah. Wait, she's not in it, obviously. No, no, no. She's dead by the time Holy it came out. Holy moly. Dolls. Musicians, uh, I feel like most artists, it's always, even the people that you think are fine, look, everyone's fucked up, but there's something about, like, being a musician. I don't know. Like, it's hard to not be, to have some darkness there. I mean, you were talking about Cobain a minute Yeah. Ago. Well, also, music's tough because it, it you, you're hot, and then you go away. The whole, like, disco guy, Bee Gees, were the top of the mountain, and then disco was, like, the the shittiest thing ever. It was, like, not cool, and they just were out of work. And also, the Bee Gees are fucking amazing. Amazing! Like, the tools that 
March that what was that Chicago where did that happen where they were like fuck disco and oh yeah the Cubs the Cubs yeah. what is it Field Damn. Wrigley yeah I and fucking love the Bee Gees though you see the documentary it's amazing it's great because they 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 fall off they're the biggest people on earth then everybody hates them and they're nerds and so they start writing for Cher they start writing for Madonna and then they they get they oh, get they had rich the again. Islands in the Stream they wrote they wrote it it's a great tune they wrote a ton of big big hits that you don't even know that are them and they're all dead except uh one one left is that right yeah well that's they... a great doc it's on max um yeah i'll tell you where else i went uh i went to the decisive game of the WNBA. i know some people are gonna trash me in the comments for this but i don't give a <laughs> shit i'm telling the story yeah tell so it the, the liberty uh they're fun games, and it's liberty, sold out. Liberty, 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 liberty. But uh, they're playing the Las Vegas Aces, who are the best team. They have injuries. They should. Liberty should have won. They don't win. Mm. But we have the MVP, Brianna Stewart. She's not the best player. The best players on the Aces, Asia Wilson. Okay, but she got the MVP for some narrative decisions, whatever. Tough. They lose by one point. We're in the game. I see Sam J there, hey. which is who you think you're going to see. Yes, at a WNBA. you hope to a black see. lesbian. Yeah. yeah, you would hope. Right? You hope. And then uh, her who, <laughs> not her who, ran Ashley Gavin too. Mm. Yeah, quite lesbian. Yeah, there you go. A lot of lesbians there. All right, as that, there should be. That metal detector took a while to get through. <laughs> Catch my drift. <laughs> what the strap-ons, <laughs> butt plugs? What are we talking here? Keychain wallet. I don't know what I was going for there. <laughs> but uh, no, it was uh, it was a good game. It, it actually wasn't a good game. They got uh, Brianna Stewart played horribly. She shot ah. three of eighteen. It was a terrible, terrible loss. Well, they should have won the game. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but as we're walking out, they're having the celebration because the Las Vegas Aces win. Mm. And uh, you know they're, they're blocking the doors. I'm like blocking the doors. I don't want to watch the fucking opposing team celebrate. So I'm trying to leave. Yeah. And they're like blocking us. Some pregnant woman bumps me. What? And she's with a much older woman. And I and I turn around and I say, you know, we're all trying to leave. Yeah. And she goes, um, I'm pregnant. Oh. And, and, throwing that and, around. And my girlfriend whispers to me, "That's Brianna Stewart's wife, oh! the star of the Liberty." And I turn around and I say, you know, if you're anything like Brianna, you're not going to deliver tonight. So, <laughs> which I said as she walked away. She didn't hear, but other people heard. I got to laugh. That's a good line. Yeah. She boxed you out. She boxed me out. Yeah. Wow. They Man. take good care of you at Barclays, dude. I'll, really? I'll say that. I've never been in there. We'll go. We're going in. We're going to Knicks games this year. Dude. I would love to see, but that's that's not at the Barclays. No, it's MSG, yeah. baby. We're going. But I would I would go to a WNBA. I could. I feel like I could keep up with it. It's fun, man. It's yeah, a fun, it's a fun experience. They got fucking Carbone in there. You get a Ooh, little free rigatoni. I've never eaten a Carbone. I tried to go twice, couldn't get in. Yeah, I never. I've never been to the one in New York. Yeah, it's I've been to the Barclays one. It's right there in the village, and I saw Schultz there with his wife, and uh, they're like, you cannot get in. And then Schultz looked at me, and I went, ah, oh, shit, and I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> he was in there, you know, feet up, big, like feeding his wife like a uh, lady in the tramp. And I was like, God <laughs> damn it, couldn't get in. I had to, me and the lady had to walk away. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there's so much good Italian though in New York. It's like some of that shit's over overrated, overpriced. You know? Yeah, yeah. I saw Kim K there once. I mean, Kim Kardashian? Yeah, she was walking out of there when she was still with Kanye. They were there mm. together. They got out of a black car, and I was like, whoa. And oh, you he, saw them You saw them walk in? I saw them walk in because I couldn't get in, but so I was waiting I mean. outside. It's like, it's, like, uh, it's like a celeb spot. I don't know if it's as, I think it's good, but I don't think it's as good as like the— It's all buzz. A lot of buzz. Yeah, which, you know, that's part of the fun, yeah. I guess. But wow, WNBA, that's cool. How was, how was Gavin? She was into it. I, I think I almost— Lost it at one of her friends she was with because someone was like, "Sit down." And, oh, and I'm geez. like, "It's the playoffs. You stand." Yeah, boy, they you stand on key play. Uh, key. Also, it's funny that people a little bossy. You know what's helping the WNBA is that they're like psycho fans now. Ah, because there was a guy yelling at one of the women, "You fucking stink! Fuck you!" <laughs> and I was like, "That's what they need. That's equality. That's equality. Yes, that's also, how we talk to the men." It's also funny that people think they automatically assume that you're a feminist if you go to these games but you know there's dudes there who just hate women right and it was, right. It was a cheap ticket yeah and he's just true. in there like you fucking bitch make me a sandwich <laughs> it's like, oh, i hate my mother <laughs> <laughs> i try to get my lady to watch and she is she's like i won't do it and i'm well, like the women are supporting now that's the difference okay good it's on them it's on them. It's, it's on all them. that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, you want people to watch this, you have to watch it. You, She's like, I'd rather watch The Bachelor. You can't be a woman who complains about inequality and in pay in sports and not support. 
Yeah. You're a, you're a, you're a hypocrite. Or don't complain. Or exactly. don't complain. Yeah. So she would not watch it. And I had this realization. Tell me this is stupid. She's like, I want to watch The Bachelor. And I go, why? She goes, this is reality TV. And I go, but this is actually edited. That's reality yeah. TV. And just like a reality show, it's a bunch of women competing for a ring. And she didn't care. <laughs> I thought <laughs> I had a good made. point. We should be dating. We have the fucking, we have fun. Yeah, exactly. If we had vaginas and we're oh, better looking. Man, I gays. Know. Gays have gays got have it made. made. That's why I want to just show women, like, look how fun it could be yeah. if you weren't uh, up our asses all day. <laughs> we could all be in a glory hole. We could be blowing each other and eating each other out. We could all be having sex 24-7, but you every, guys have every feelings. Every female listener, all the women we just brought in with that WNBA talk have just X'd that uh, on YouTube. Well, we're trying to support it. You're going no, to gay. I'm trying I to get the lady it. to watch it. I just like sports, and I like New right. York sports, and I like basketball. I'm, I'm supporting. But uh, Yeah. Well, I think a lot of women can't relate. You you play basketball. I grew up you know, shooting hoop with friends. Yeah. I don't think you know my lady was like ever watching or playing basketball in her life. Yeah. But you got to support. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, they need more drama. They need like hair pulling. They need to cheat on a man. There is some drama. Now. They talk some shit. Okay, you need. That's why that college basketball shit was good with Caitlin Clark, where Angel Reese. They were like talking oh, shit to each other. Oh, that blew good. up. Fifty five thousand people went to watch Caitlin Clark. Like th there is a future in this. You just have to. Here's the thing I get. No one shits on Rogan, by the way. People will shit on me if I defend the WNBA because look, it wasn't a good league ten years ago. I'll give you that. It's getting good. Yeah. No one shits on Rogan for. Is he for, a fan? No, for pumping up female fighters. Oh yeah, but you should. I, I just don't understand it. I guess interesting because that people. I'm a UFC guy, and no one even bats an eye. We just watch them all. Right. No one's like, oh, this is the female fight. Fuck that. It's like, yeah. no, it's a good fight. So yeah. that is interesting because basketball, we go ah WNBA, but the female it, fighters don't bat an out, eye. The the competition was not good. I, I'll give you that, but it's getting good. I think the names would help if they had funnier names. Like I compare it to like the. <laughs> The Cleveland uh, cunts or whatever, you know that would uh, that would help it. <laughs> the Indiana tampons. Yes, yes. Yeah. The, the Miami miscarriage. Something. They got the worst mascot. <laughs> <laughs> the bloody head. Uh, uh, their careers in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, man. What what else you been up to? You been on the road? Uh, been all over the road. How about this? Did Portland, Maine? Great. Which, do you do that theater? I did. That theater's incredible. Beautiful what is it, theater. the State Theater? State what? Theater. That's a great one. 1925, old as shit, rickety, cool looking, a lot of patina. I got heckled for an hour and a half. Oh, wow. I don't know what it was. There it is. Beautiful room. Sold it out. Yeah, yeah. And there's something about Maine. It's up there. It's Ray Harrington has this great bit about how Maine is, is Canada's Florida. Because it's like hanging off the country. It's like the south of the north. Wow. Because they're like, they're wearing camo hats. They hunt. They're Republican. They're they're driving trucks. But then Portland's kind of bougie. But then Portland's bougie. Because you got uh, that seafood. It's like it's a kind of a, it's actually a vacation destination. It is. It's and huge. It, and the hotels are kind of Very nice. nice. Yeah. They say more restaurants per capita in Portland than anywhere else. And the, the, the cruise is parked there. And, it's all and lobster. It's great. It's like fucking Auschwitz I love it. for lobsters. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you're a lobster, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> they, are, they are coming for you. Uh, that's true. And uh, we had lobster rolls in the green room, of course. You got to do it up. But, yes, it's such a cool place. It's a really pretty city. It's right on the water. It's a lot of, like, fishermen on heroin and tugboats and all that shit. Good stuff. A lot of L.L. Bean, you yes. know, a lot of whitey. But there's something about Doug Key went up and... Doug's funny. Doug's great. They were just not having it. They were like, ah, what? No, boo, heckling, saying stuff. And he's like, what are you guys doing? I'm I'm trying to do my act. And like one joke would hit, then another one would fall flat. And he's great. So it was, he's been touring with me for a while. So I knew it wasn't him. And uh, then I went up and I had to just, if I didn't, if I didn't keep my foot on the gas, they would yell. Any like free moment, they would yell. So I was throwing people out left and right. Uh, you always have one of those. It's weird to have those in theaters. I actually, yeah. I had a good one there, but I've had other ones on the on this run that have been like, "Wow, that was work." You know? Yeah, I think they pre-gamed a little hard because they were when I talked to the bouncer guys after, and they're like, "Everybody we threw out was like legless." I was like, "All right, well." It happened to me in Tulsa, but I ended up getting a gift of a guy just so he was so shit faced, and he just kept. As he was getting tossed, he just kept screaming out gold. So I was like, fucking let him stay. It was like, kind of funny. <laughs> and uh, 
ended up like getting them water. Then I was like, "Fuck, give one more drink on me." And oh, but uh, we ended up great. having fun. But they were bombed. Yeah, one... Tulsa, that room. Have you done that Kane's Ballroom? I'm going there soon. It's January, epic. Really? I love it. Oh, great. All right. And and you got to hit up uh, the Demarco Slice, uh, the pizza place. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the name. It's killer. All right, I'm down. Yeah, one guy we threw out went and bought merch from Doug and then put it on and ripped it in front of him. So they meant business, these guys. That's like the weirdest dick move ever. Yeah, Doug's like, I got your money. I don't give a shit what you do with the shirt, but... Yeah, that's like fucking mean. It's a little aggressive, but he paid for it. You can do yeah, it. Yeah, that's like that's, probably, that's a dick. It's a dick, but he'll jizz in it later anyway. You know, like it. it you know, it's who knows where that shirt's going. He feels bad about himself. He goes home and he's like, "Fuck!" Yeah. Just puts it around his neck, hangs himself. <laughs> so of course we go out. We got wrecked, too yeah. drunk, and yeah. then the next day we drove. We got in the car and drove, hung over like like this, and drove to uh, Providence, and that was amazing. Love Providence, Providence. great Providence town. Is Providence is like weirdly kind of similar to Maine where it's like there's like some really poor parts but then there's like really bougie parts. Oh it's yeah. Weird. Oh yeah. Rhode Island. Newport over Newport there is, is incredible. Hunter Biden's got like a three million dollar home. There oh really? Where you're like wait what? How is it? And then you see it you're like I get, if you're on if you're on the water you can charge like anything. Oh yeah. It's crazy. They're like it's like a crack house but they're like it's on the water. It's on the water. Yeah. You can puke right out the window yeah. and uh, yeah that it was It is a crack house if it's Hunter Biden's by the way. Ah good point. <laughs> Good boy, oh, yeah. <laughs> Coke at the White House. <laughs> the White House is now a Coke House. <laughs> it's an app name, I guess, White yeah. House. But yeah, then uh, today, or yesterday, me and Salicuse went and saw Killers of the Flower Moon. I saw it, too. I want to know what you think. All right. Uh, I got to be honest, I didn't love it. Really? Okay. I liked it. I didn't... Li- I got... I got issues with it. All right, well, we'll get into it. Let's but get into it. So the best part of the movie was Salicuse was trying to buy a flight... He had a death in the family, so he's trying to buy a flight on the phone. I'm like, why don't you just go online? He's like, I got to get the bereavement fair. So he's getting the bereavement fair <laughs> like a fucking New York uh, Costanza. Costanza, yeah. And so he's like, yeah, she died two days ago. I have the death certificate. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> right. We were the only people in the theater, thank God. Really? Yeah. He was dead? 1 p.m. There was one old couple in the in the rafters, but they were nine. One guy was sleeping. I heard his snoring. It was a long movie. It was very long. I thought it was really good. I thought it was great. Salicuse nailed it. He said, no tension. You know, every Scorsese movie, you got you got a Ray Liotta, like, oh, the helicopters, and we got to make the sauce, and, you know, the, you're, you're, you're up against it, or the, the criminals are coming. They're going to murder us. They're going to hit us with a ball-peen hammer and put our head in a vice, like Casino. This right. was kind of just... It it moved, but there was never those like rape murder. <laughs> it's just a shot away. You know, they're shooting a guy in the back of the head. A car blows up. A guy, they push a guy in a, in a grave. There wasn't that moment of it like need, it needed that opening. Ever since I was young, I wanted to steal money from the Osage Indians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They didn't have that, but I thought it was great and a, a psychological thriller. I mean, I, I got a lot of problems with it. Please, first off. I love the book. I said this on the podcast before. I love. I think David Grant's an incredible writer. Yeah. To me, in the book, the most interesting character by far is the detective who detective. is played by Jesse Plemons, oh. the, the, the bureau inspector. Sorry, whatever. He didn't have a lot of development. No development. He, in in real life, he's by far the most interesting what? character. I mean, he like had this crazy life story. He, he came from uh, this interesting family. He had tension with. Uh, with uh, fucking god damn, why is his name escaping me? With J. Edgar Hoover, he had, oh really he had tension with uh, the FBI yes. director. So there were, he like he wasn't accepted by Hoover because he wasn't like an Ivy League you know buttoned up guy. He was more blue collar, and that had, it was interesting. He did he did this amazing case. This was like that in the book. The most interesting parts are how they prosecute and and develop, mm. and you're basically getting it from a one. You're getting it from Ernest. Uh, Burkhart's point of view, who is a dumb fuck. DiCaprio. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's a really, thick. he's a thick character. It's hard to like, for me, like, you bring, bring up Goodfellas or Casino. Those are smarter villains. Yeah, yeah. So it's just kind of, I'm just like, all right. It's also three and a half hours. I, I say with this type of movie, you got to make it either two and a half or make it a fucking miniseries, man. Mm, interesting. I, it's interesting to me that Scorsese, who I love, and I'm, and I'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree here, but... 
he's like all about saving cinema and it's like you want to save it with a three and a half hour slow burn that, yeah i'll be honest if I didn't read the book, I would have been confused as fuck by this movie because they're just introducing characters and not like kind of telling you who they are. Yeah, there's like all those tertiary characters in the beginning. Barnaby comes in, the detective comes in. He got well. I don't want to say anything. Yeah, but yeah, you're right. There's a lot of people. Even with at one point, I was like, "Who was that who got stabbed?" Exactly. Who was that guy? There's a lot of that, and and I'm just like, if I didn't, I don't know. I I would have been pretty confused. It's, it looks beautiful. Beautifully shot and beautifully it, edited. And the actors are great. The it's, acting's it's amazing. It's a Scorsese movie, you know? Uh, but I got a beef with Frazier. I thought Brendan was weirdly over the top. I'm here to declare. I'm like, what are you, Foghorn Leghorn? Take it easy in the courtroom. I think that's how they talked in I the guess. 20s. But it was weird. Yeah, it was a weird choice. It also looked like, I was like, man, this guy, did he keep the bodysuit from the whale on when he <laughs> know, came over right? here? He, he looked he looked exactly the same. I thought he was going to jerk it to gay porn at one point. <laughs> By the way, Lily Gladstone amazing. was ama- such a subtle actor, she's and amazing. her face would say so much. Those eyes and everything, it was really, I've never seen a, she's going to win the Oscar. I'm calling her right now. Also, I don't know, uh, yeah, I just, I guess I just didn't love it. I don't know. It's like, for me, to do a three and a half hour slow burn, Salacuse, yeah, he's right. There's not a lot of tension. Not a lot there of was, tension. There was a lot of just kind of boring scenes, and also the way... I don't want to give too much away yeah, if you haven't yeah. seen it, because there's stuff I want to say, but if you haven't seen it, it is still a new movie. Mm-hmm. I'm glad I saw it, just because it looked amazing, and I just wanted to know, but I yeah, I didn't love it. Yeah, all right. That's, that's a I good love take. Scorsese, and yeah. I love his passion. I think the way he ended it, I did. I was like, that, that was powerful. That I ending just, was badass. It was badass, but I just didn't. I just think there's so much more he could have done. Yeah. And and I really, that was just such an undeveloped, Jesse Plemons is such a good actor and it's such a good character and I, I wanted more of him. Yeah, he was like, I don't want to say weak, but just there was not much to him at all. He was just the the long arm of the law. And also I think if you're going to write characters who are this stupid and evil, uh, like Ernest Burkhart, you know, you have to really expose their stupidity and those were the funniest scenes. Like right. there's a great line where... Uh, Jesse Plemons shows up, and I'm not giving anything away here, but he just, you know, his his character shows up, and he goes, "We're here to uh, investigate, uh, to look into the murders," and and Leonardo DiCaprio's character goes, "What about him?" And he goes, "Who did him?" <laughs> Got a big laugh in the theater. It's just, a, but you're like, that's the level of stupidity you're dealing with. And yeah. I wanted more uh, of that type of stuff because right. dealing with them in court, you're like, wow, they're fucking sleazy and Sle- and awful. dumb and sociopathic. How about the scene with that guy, Louis Cancelman, or whatever his name is, where he's like, you realize you're saying, you're imp- you're implying that you might kill your kids that to get great. the insurance money. And he's like, well, that, that's the level of die. stupidity you're dealing with in right. evil. But also the real life, uh, the character who Jesse Plemons plays in real life, he, uh, he had this crazy second chapter, too, where he... Uh, after this, he he ended up, I think, being like, "Fuck, I'm never going to move up in the bureau." So he ended up taking a job as a prison warden, mm. and he saw William Hale. That, like he was nice. He was nice to everyone. Yeah. He, even if you were in prison, he was like he treated with you with respect. There was a prison breakout, and these guys took him hostage and shot him. Huh. And he lived. Wow. But he was fucked up from getting shot, and he was still nice to those people after he brought them back to Interesting. Pri- like, he was just a decent man. Yeah. And and uh, Hoover never gave him his flowers, ever. Oh, really? He just, like, wasn't his type of dude. He was. I, I think he saw him as more of a simple guy, but he was a pretty brave guy. I yeah. Think. Well, Scorsese didn't give him his flowers either. What the hell? That's what I'm saying. And also... I don't know. And he looks like if uh, Matt Damon got hit with a couple gamma rays, doesn't he? He's character actor Damon, for sure. I know. It's a sad... Fat Damon? Fat Damon. (laughs) My Norman. He's a great actor. He's great. He's always great. But uh, also, I thought DiCaprio was getting a little borderline sling blade in there at some point. So I'm like, all right, easy, Billy Bob. You got that that protruding chin and the underbite a little hard. But Dude, pull up a picture of real life Molly Burkhart and Ernest uh, because you're going to be like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. Like she's the actress they got to play. No, no, no. Go down. There's a better. That one to the right, all the way to the right. Holy moly. Uh, Top right, top right. Like, wow. You don't think this dude fucking married you for your money? Yeah. I like, don't mean to be a dick, but holy shit. This is some 90 Day Fiance shit <laughs> right here. I mean, you're like, that dude, you're like, yeah, Leonardo should play that dude. Yeah. And then you're like, who should play her? I don't know, Danny Trejo? <laughs> 
the hell is going on here? This is this is brutal. I mean, like Ooh, terrible life. I feel my sure, heart goes out to her. The, she, they were tough people. She was getting poisoned. The, the diabetic. Yes, uh, it, it's. Uh, you yeah, know. the stealing the money, all their family dies. Well, I don't want to give much away. But. I mean, it's a really insane what they had to 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 get to be lucky enough to get that wealth, and then you just get murdered. Yeah, I know the white man. Yeah, but the white man saved. <laughs> <laughs> we had both sides of the coin. We're a very complex race. Everything's but, complex. Yeah, he was a handsome guy, so they they it's a good and good dumb. casting. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know Danny Trejo. Boy, that is really something. You fucking nailed it on that one. <laughs> Who's, I think, uh, Hispanic, but it worked. Yeah. yeah. That, if we really break that one down, it might be racist. So let's leave that nah, alone. Ah, you're fine. You're no, fine. Right, good. It, it's a perfect call. I got a... Uh, you got any... <laughs> Oh, I got peeves. Oh, I love I love I'm some still peeves. having a Trejo because I was sitting there trying to think of who you could use and you fucking hit it right on the bullseye. All right, here we go, Peeves. I got a couple of bangers, I think. I hope. <laughs> um, all right, this is annoying. This this might get weird, but uh, you ever have this one? You go, uh, hold on. I go, uh, that guy, that guy we just met, was he gay? And then I had the lady be like, some random woman was like, Oh, what do you mean? Is he gay? What's wrong with being gay? I'm like, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with being gay. I'm asking if he is gay. And she's like, I don't know. What are you saying? All gay guys are alike? I'm like, I'm saying I don't know if he's gay. If they were all alike, I would know that he was gay. And we're like getting into it. And I'm like, what is this bullshit where we pretend to not, not, people don't have like, you know, qualities that make you, because we have gaydar. Right. But then if you go, was he gay? She was, she's just lost it on me. She was who like, lost? who was this? It was just like a comic's girlfriend. And I'm like, I'm was, asking, was she gay? No, she oh. was the girlfriend of a, a male comedian. And I'm like, I'm just asking, was he gay? And she's like, well, how would I, how would I know? And I'm like, well, some people have better gaydar. I have no gaydar. And she was like, well, who cares if he's gay? I'm like, I'm just curious if he's gay. And it's just weird. Yeah. Like Bill Burr has that great joke where uh, he's talking about a, like a super butch lesbian, and a woman's like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "You know what you're picturing? That." <laughs> you know, it like it it pisses me off that she's acting like there's never been a gay guy who's like, "Hello," yes. and we all go, "Okay, that guy's gay." Yeah. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying some gay guys can be more flamboyant. Everybody knows that. I couldn't tell. I'm asking if he You're was asking gay. about a person. I don't like. I don't get why it, that's offensive. Yeah, yeah we like, we got into it. Damn, um, that's was, a, it's yeah. weird to be offended by. A, I mean, I know. I don't get that. I'm just curious. Is he gay? You know. And then she's like, "Why do you care?" I'm like, "Maybe I'll hit on him." You know, like how do you know I'm not into him? I need to know if he's gay before I hit on him. It, it, it it's always like some implication of like, so you hate him? Like, no, I'm. I'm hanging out with them. It's the same tone of, of like smugness as those people who are like uh, the doctor, and you're like, "Oh, what did he say?" She said, uh, and you're like, "All yeah. right, you're a better person. Right, than me. I'm right. sorry. You're yes. you're more tolerant. Right, um, right. There probably are more are more male doctors in America. So you went with the odds. And also, I'm a guy. I just it's not. It's just I'm a man. So yeah. I say that because I know more men than women. Right. It's right. not. You know. the, the worst is when you. Uh, by the way, if you said serial killer, what, what, what was a serial? Was he blonde? They never go. She. she. It's only for doctors and shit. <laughs> but it, the worst is when you do it to a dog and somebody flips out. You're like, I don't give a shit yeah. if the dog's a guy or girl. Oh, what's his name? Her name. It's a Shih Tzu. <laughs> it shits on the floor. I'd love to kick it in the face. Now I, I miss Winnie, shit. dude. Fuck. Oh, yeah. I miss Winnie. You gotta bring Winnie back. I like her. <laughs> All right. She. Yeah, she's very fun. Yeah. And a big hit in the comments, by the way. People love Win People want more Winnie, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not, not a big hit with your cat, unfortunately, but. Well, you know. We, what, uh, is that cat gay? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, got, I got peeves. Let me see what I got. I know I got some peeves. I got lots of peeves. Yeah, it always goes to hate. Oh, oh uh, I got another one, too. What do I got? Um, Trey. <laughs> Uh, people, Ooh. people, <laughs> people who are who are cunts and victims. That's my. Oh, good when, one. When you say something shitty and then a person reacts and then they're like, "Oh, no, oh you really hurt me yes. with how you reacted." Yes, I'm just like wait, there's but a, you said the mean thing. There's a term for this online. It's what? called cry bully. 
Ooh, I yeah, that. they they're mean, and then when you give it back to them, they cry. Damn. So they always win. They get to be mean, and they get to be coddled. Ooh, it's pretty brilliant. Bully. It's also uh, people who a lot of liberals do this where they where they poke you and then you respond and they're just like I don't want to I don't want to talk about that and you're like uh, but you brought it up you brought it up so true it's like they get to get their shot in yes and then you're like you just hit me and they're just like I'm I'm going the other room right right yeah yeah it's so true my brother used to do that he was such a bitch fighter he would hit you and then you'd hit him back and he was like oh ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell? You hit me. So, yeah, I'm totally with you on that one. That's no good. Oh, my God. Cry bully. There it is. It's in the Urban Dictionary, my folks. My mom did this to me. She came to the cellar with me. uh -oh. And my mom does – and I'm not calling my mom the C word, by the way. I was saying in a more general sense. Mm -hmm. But my mom uh, – Watch my set. I'm getting – a woman's talking my entire set at the comedy cellar. Mm. And – I'm doing a long bit that I can't really bail out of right. lose momentum. So I had to just kind of power through. And then at the end of the bit, I get, I get my pop and I go, you're going to talk the whole show? Yeah. I kind of like say it. And she kind of then is like bails off. And I and I get a couple lines zinging her. And then I you know I go into an abortion joke and I kind of pause. I'm like, you know, that thing you should have been. And I <laughs> get, my, get my quick laugh and I move on and yeah. it's fine. But she's annoying. And Val, the manager at the cellar, goes in and they're like, sure, sure. And I get off stage and my mom goes – you're mean. And I was like... Your mom said yeah. that? Oh, wow. Like, You're signing with a drunk yeah. heckler over me? And my mom's like, you just handled it in a very mean way. Val overhears it, and Val goes, no, he handled that very well, actually. All right, Val. And my mom goes, I don't want to I don't want to talk about it. I'm like, you just call me mean. Yeah. Also, where's the backup, Mom? You're on my team. <laughs> you should not. be hating this lady with me. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, I was bummed. <laughs> Damn. Come on, Mom. Yeah. And she started it. This she other lady. started it. I know. It's just you could have been a lot meaner. You could I, have gone in on her. You did one line and got out. I, was, I just said to her, I was like, you know, how many years I've done the road. Like, do you think I would have survived in papered strip malls if I didn't have like the, uh, you know, ability to do crowd control a little of bit? Course, you gotta, you gotta of course. You got to turn it on. Yeah. No. That I'm with you on that one. Yeah. Thank you. Come on. You hear that, mom? Yeah. We'll get her on here and really berate her. <laughs> <laughs> we sit her down. She's like, No, I'm not. Yeah. I can't. I, <laughs> Yeah, no, we, we're we all fans. No, I love you, but, Mom. I geez, love you, Mom. That, we, that, we're good. We we patch it up. Well, that's the thing. If you talk during a show, like you're you're open now. You're you're exactly. A, you're a target. So that's on you. Yeah. Uh, all right. How about this, Peeve? Hold on. All right. <laughs> what is it? A... Farting in people's faces? <laughs> is that the Peeve? Uh, <laughs> um... If it's not, I got one coming up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Factor. It's the age of convenience, baby. We're constantly trying to save time whenever we can. With Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, you'll never have to cook again. Talk about a game changer. Factor delivers chef-prepared, dietitian approved meals straight to your door. They're always fresh, never frozen. Just heat them up in two minutes and dinner's served. Choose from over 35 weekly meal options with fall favorites like cranberry pecan chicken, Apple Dijon pork chops with so many options as something for everybody and the whole family will love it. Factor's awesome. I can't cook. These things come right to my house. It's amazing. I'm always on the go. They're quick. They taste great. And I'm not getting a ton of vegetables, but with Factor I am. And they got veg uh, sorry, vegan, vegetarian, keto, calorie smart, protein plus. No matter what your goals are, they can get you there. Head to factormeals.com slash drunk50 and use code drunk50 to get 50% off. Half off. That's huge. That's code drunk50 at factormeals.com slash drunk50 to get 50% off. Do it today. That's a, these are good deals. Yeah. They're half off. It's huge. Between the holiday shopping, the cooking, and the gift wrapping, things can get crazy fast. ShipStation is here to save you time with your small business so you can focus on the people and the traditions that make the season so special. ShipStation is shipping software that makes order fulfillment and processing returns a breeze. Mm. With industry-leading discounted rates on USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post, you'll save tons on shipping costs, and ShipStation effortlessly manages orders, prints labels, compares rates, and automates delivery notifications. It's truly a one-stop shop for a smooth workflow. Got to use this. It makes your life much easier. 
Uh, if any of your customers have returns to make, ShipStation automates the process, recommends exchanges, and even gathers customer feedback. Let your customers shop risk-free this holiday with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use code DRUNK today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code DRUNK. Nice. ShipStation.com, code DRUNK. Get on it. <laughs> the two really, words he could have done it we didn't even have a guess this week he couldn't have done it that way oh he had I, to do it right into my try to keep it neutral <laughs> i could have done this but yeah. oh right. jesus christ no i wouldn't do that to you so this is gaza and i'm fleeing right now <laughs> two words yeah. full stop i'm so sick of full stop so that's my views on ukraine they shouldn't be whatever, hada hada who, Russia's a superpower, Putin's evil, full stop. You can just stop. Yeah, I mean, wait, what is that? You've never heard full stop? Yeah, I mean, no, I have, but I don't care. Is, oh, yeah. is that like a period? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't, what are we doing? Just you, you can just stop. You don't have to say full stop. It's like reading a telegram in like the Yes, 30s or yes, something. exactly. So and so needs more medicine, period. Space, new paragraph. No, just just stop talking. You know what? It is? It's kind of like on social media when people, I guess it was mostly Twitter, when people would do like the, the claps. We yes. need to stop apartheid. Oh. And they put claps in between and you're like, well, that tweet will do it. Yeah. yeah Good job. Exactly. I hate the what, claps. What do people expect? I don't know what they, they're like. They're like, I did it. I know. That's By the way, that's activism now. Of course, is someone yeah. is you just people used to have to like put on a, a suit and go to Mississippi in the yeah. sweltering heat. Now they're just like, I'm sad. Send. Yes, exactly. My work's done. Yeah, these atrocities need to end. <laughs> Full stop. Thank you, lady at Coffee Bean. <laughs> no, it's it's out of control. But you know, I, there's a great video of a guy who goes to a campus and he's one of these assholes with the uh, the microphone in your face, and he's like, "Do you think?" Illegal immigrants should be allowed in college, and every student's like 100%. He's like, but who's going to pay for it? And they're like, they'll find somebody to pay for it. And he goes, well, we actually started a fund if you want to give money. And they all go, ah, I got to get out of here. So he's like, he's basically just showing, like, you, you talk a big game, but you're not actually willing got to help. my mom. She was like, nope, I, I got to go. Yeah, she's like, you're mean. <laughs> <laughs> I do hate the... Uh... That gotcha shit. I hate the gotcha shit, too, on both sides. I got a good pee for you. All right. Um, all right. People at the gym who are filming. If you want to just film yourself, don't put me in the fucking shot. Oh yeah, I got I got was in someone's shot recently. I didn't find out till I got tagged on Instagram. Really? Oh, yeah, because this guy had a decent amount of followers. So it's like, and by the way, he they always look like a superhero. You never look at your best. No, he's no. benching five hundred pounds. I'm behind him scratching my ass. So yeah. I'm like, well, glad this one uh, got all these clicks. Yeah, know? well, pull that up if you can. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. Did I'm, you reshare it? I don't know where it is. I'm sure I could find it actually. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, enough with the gym filming. Just go work out. We need content at the gym. If it's for, some people are like monitoring their progress, and that's, okay, that's, that's true. I think that's fine. That's I don't care. True. And also, if you if that's your page, some people are like you know. Uh, the, people post that the way we post our stand-up, you know? Sure, If that's sure. your whole thing. But, but <laughs> you're supposed to be filming a stand-up show, and it's our theater show. Like, we're the headliner. This is a full public gym. If you want to do that, go to a Anytime Fitness at 4 a.m. when you have the whole place to yourself and and set up a full rig and lights and a, get a boom guy and a director. Go nuts. Yeah. But enough with this shit. Not using up two machines because one is the camera thing, and then the other one is you using the machine. It's it's too much. Yeah, but peeves are good, man. You get this out, you feel good. You go about your day. Yeah, I got another one. Please. When I'm at Killers of the Flower Moon. Uh huh. Is this? No way. I'm in this. Is this another one? No, I'm not in this. Oh, uh, I want to see you struggling. This dude, this dude I would have remembered. Sam's in a black socks. Uh, he's got like dress socks on, <laughs> and uh, and a weird t-shirt and i want to see you just like trying to put the 25 pound thing <laughs> on the bar you know it's not even the machine uh i had another one so i'm at uh i'm at killers of the flower moon i'm with my mom we see the movie and uh the, you know you have to select the seats now. It's not like the old days. We That's just right. Showed up. No, I'm not in this one, dude. I, I don't know where it is. I, I got. I didn't get like tag tag. I got someone commented my name, mm. so that's why I saw it. But, <clears throat> um, 
so you have to pick your seats, right? Yeah. It's a pretty – we saw it was a pretty full theater. Uh, and we go uh, – we get to our seats. There's jackets all over our seats. And I, I kind of say, does this belong to anyone here? Because I think these are our seats. Uh-oh. And this old couple in the row in front turn around like annoyed. Ah. They like get up annoyed like, ugh. And she, it took forever to move them. I'm like, sure. how fucking hard is this? Yeah. You know? She I moves it. And then, and then no, no, like, oh, sorry about that. It's yeah. Like, just like, oh, we wanted more seats. Well, then buy the fucking seats. This is out of control. I can't stand people doing fucked up shit and then getting mad at when you call them on it. I know. It, that's the whole it's society. Bo- cry now. bullies. Cry bully completely. And we need yeah. a drill sergeant to come in there with a fucking whistle and crazy arms and be like, shut the fuck up. You apologize to him. We need somebody to keep these people in check because they just keep doing it. We need that guy from the college campuses with a mic. Do you think this is OK? <laughs> yes. Yes. Bring Do him you think in. It's OK. Well, I was talking to List and I, he figured out how he got COVID. He was at Chipotle and this lady kept coughing and coughing Ooh. like big, wet, loud cough. Ugh. And he kind of gave her one of these. And she was like. Everywhere I go, people give me dirty looks. I'm coughing. I'm allowed to cough. And you're like, and then she goes, you should get a mask. And he's like, you're coughing. Why am I the bad guy? And by the way, that person like is COVID. Is COVID. You're not, you're not, you don't just have COVID. You're COVID. Yes, yes. You're a pandemic. You're ruining lives. And, uh, but that's where we're at. Like the lady with the, or the guy with the boom box on the bus and he's just <laughs> blaring it. And you're like, hey, could you turn that down? He's like, fuck you, man. I do what I do. And you're like, why am I bad? You you got yeah. a boombox. People just sneeze. A, a guy nearly sneezed on me the other day in the street, and I I, I wasn't even mad. I actually started laughing. I'm like, it's just so gross. You start laughing. Yeah. You're like, yeah. wow, you're such fucking garbage. I know. No covering the mouth. Those are my favorite people. The people just sneezing into the air. Yeah. You're not even covering your mouth. And w- what is going on with men's? I don't know how you sneeze, but I try to keep a dull roar. But my dad's like, ah. Hey, hey! <laughs> like, is that necessary? Like birds are flying like out of a, a tree when you sneeze. Oh, that guy just poked his head out. I think I scared him. He's but, Tarzan. Yeah, I'm like, what is that? You, you need to do that where the the birds flap away from the building. But here's one more peeve, and then we'll move it along. Oh, we got this, by the way. Oh. A real estate novelist is a writer who specializes in crafting stories around the buying, selling, or flipping properties. Woo, All right, riveting stuff. Yeah, right, that's that? why it's at the bar. J.K. Rowling over there? All right. Yeah, that's why he's at the bar drinking his sorrows away because nobody's buying his paperback on uh, condos. So, last peeve, then we'll move it along. By the way, the peeves are a big hit. I get a lot of people, I do like a Q&A. People and like, like peeves. People just yell peeves, and I don't know what to say. Um, okay. First of all, electric vehicles are a nightmare. I, I'm using a couple openers who will rent an electric vehicle. They're like, hey, I picked up a rental car. I got a half off for an EV. And I'm like, you got fucked. Because all our whole whole trip is now revolved around charging this thing. Because we're going like a you know a two-hour drive, and they just they just plummet in energy when you do it on the highway. Yeah. You know, just woo, that energy bar is going down. So we're always like, well, we'll get an ice cream and let it charge. Oh, we'll go, go to the comic book store and read a couple of Spider-Mans. I'm like, what are we doing? We could have been there by now. But that's the EV for you. <laughs> So the electric car is just it just has Todd Barry's voice. <laughs> I'm not driving anymore, dog. Yeah, I'm yeah, done. Exactly. This is a super secret car drop in. <laughs> so, so we pull up to the EV place, the charging station, which is always out in the burbs. It's by a Red Robin and uh, and all that shit, you know, by a Ruby Tuesday. And it's a concrete jungle. You got the 12 Tesla chargers. They're all full, and there's a line. So we're like, God, not only is the charge a half hour, but the line's 20 minutes. So now we've lost an hour doing this shit. So this lady pulls up in front of us and goes right to the charging station, and we're waiting in line, clearly. And then we're kind of giving her like the, we're in line, and she backs it up, and now we're window to window, and she goes, are you in line? And we're like, yeah. She goes, all right, I'll wait then. Like, oh, 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 thank you for doing exactly the rules. Well, what do you mean? Like, she said it like, all right, I'll be a good person to wait. Like, no, that's how lines work. We were here a half hour before you, you crazy coos. You and broke now you... the rules, and now you want credit for not breaking that's, the rules. That's a yeah. better way to put yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you. No, yeah. people are fucking awful. The worst. I'll get. We'll get in line behind you then. Yes. That's how it goes. This city's, I'll tell you, everywhere, people, no fucking manners. No. no decency. I, I nearly got hit by a guy. This fucking asshole, I told you, I hate the bikes in New York. This oh, yeah. guy whizzes by me, and he fucking is on his phone. Mm. He almost hit me because he's on his fucking phone. I had a green light. Yeah. 100% his fault, and I go, 
what the fuck? Yes. And he turns around and goes, fuck you. And there he keeps, you go. That's what it took for him to... I was like, to wow. stop talking on the phone. I've yeah. really got to start macing motherfuckers as they go by. I, I know. I'd love to see them fly through a fucking windshield. Well, they keep getting away with it, so there's no uh, there's no repercussions. I, I will do prayers at night that he ends up paralyzed. Yeah! I fucking, I pray. It'll happen if you keep yeah. biking in this city. It's that way he won't happen. be able to look at his fucking phone. <laughs> Well, he'll look at in the hospital bed when he's got the, the... A nurse is holding. He's like, ah, thank God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. He's like swiping right with his nose because his whole body's banged up. Yeah. It's the next step. And yeah, we're, we're going to go backwards in evolution. Just the guy like, mm. That's true. Mm. Yeah. Well, you ever see a, a WALL-E? I haven't seen it. Oh, I, heard, I heard it's amazing. Brilliant, brilliant yeah. movie. I mean, Pixar always kills it. Yeah, but the, good. the whole thing is at the end, Wally gets up to the spaceship, <laughs> and it's just fat people in chairs who like uh, drink smooth or uh, Slurpees and Frosties all day and don't want to work. And it, they nailed it. It's great. It's just all screens. Then the screens go down, and they're like, "What do I do?" And they try to walk, but they're too fat. It's great. It's just called the Minneapolis Airport. <laughs> the fucking. Woo! That's really what, they, what people were like. Oh my god, this is like you ever you ever trying to run to get a connect flight and you're just like weaving through people. It's like you feel like you're on one of those like old Nickelodeon yes game shows. Totally like uh, with the the one with the supermarket sweep. Oh, you know, dude, you got your luggage just cutting through porkers all that, day. It showed, but that show is like should just have like people in it. You have yeah, to get around people too. That's, that's true. The, god damn. But yeah, a lot of airport running. People have seen me running like comedy, <laughs> <laughs> whizzing by, and I give it one of these. But you you can't stop. <laughs> oh, you're done. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a wild world out there. But I think as a road comic, you can't be too big. You, you got to be nimble. I'm yeah. running down subway stairs. I'm jumping on trains. I, uh, I feel like a John Wick out here. It's tough to you know because I I like to. I like to have a drink, but it, yeah, sure. you got to make sure to hit the gym too, just to like not, to, yeah, to be able to to move a little. I know. I felt bad because you know Maine was such a slugfest comedically, and then we sh- got shit faced just to get through it. Then we're I'm like banged up, one of those old fashioned 2008 hangovers in Providence, where I was like. I can't move. I really can't move. I got in the hotel. I just laid down for a while, and I'm like, this sucks for the Providence crowd because I'm all shitty i'm like i'm like 50 percent of my normal self so i had to i drank like eight coffees a diet coke and i got a green juice and i made made myself do push-ups i'm sweating out tequila and then i just went out there and tried to bring it but you have to just like trick yourself and that you're not that fucked up i it's weird because coffee is what i do when i when i'm hungover too but what what's helping you is also hurting you you're, de- yeah. you're getting more dehydrated true but yeah i need i need to fight it I know it does give you a little brain relief, like the, my head hurts less when the coffee, but my body's still wrecked. It's like different anxiety. I it really it's is like caffeine anxiety instead of the hangover. Which I'll, I'd rather have the caffeine anxiety than the oh fuck, yeah, it ain't gonna work out anxiety. Yes, from exactly. The hangover. And I feel I can see myself on stage. I'm like a second slower. You know, like oh, if I was not hungover, I could have thought of something here. But you're just a little foggier with the hangover. Yeah, it's a little tougher. You need that brain moving, you know, firing at all synapses or whatever the hell. You but know, yeah. what, you know what I was watching the other day. Have you ever seen this movie, uh, old mammoth movie called House of Games? No. It's with young Joe Montana and Lindsey Krauss. No. It's fucking good. House of like, Games. What's the, what's the Rotten Tomatoes? It was good. I call that a Dave and Buster's <laughs> House of Games. Yeah, it's it's good. Oh wow, ninety seven percent. It's uh. It's slick. It's about a, it's about con men. Okay, I like con Montaigne men. Montaigne is cool as fucking it. All right, I don't even know who Lindsey Krauss is. Yeah, I text List about it, and he goes, "One of my favorites." What? So, yeah, it was a cool movie. I know the game with Sean Penn. Another great movie, Fincher. Fucking Fincher, dude. Yeah, so good. I told you my Fincher story. No. Oh, I think I I must have told you this. I, I worked know. on Benjamin Buttons. As you a, did tell me. This. Okay, yeah, 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 PA, yeah, and I got to see him fire a guy. I forgot that was Fincher. Yeah. Yeah. Threw the hat down like out of a movie. The whole thing. <laughs> Stepped on it. God, you'll never work in this town again. The guy was like, I'm so sorry, Mr. Fitch. He's like, get out of my sight. I never want to see you again. That Damn. whole thing. It was awesome. And then he pushed him off a building. And it, was, <laughs> it was all a game. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. Then I had to get his coffee after, and I was trembling. I was Oof. like, here you go, sir. I was like 19 years old. Ah. How did he take his coffee? Oh, shit. I think I just got him a black coffee. 
from I, the, I respect the black coffee drinker. Yeah. It's always, I feel like a lot of people, I feel for some reason, a lot of famous people, they like put a lot of sugar in it or, or Splendor, whatever the hell. And I'm like, how the hell do you do? Because those are people who have like cream and sugar and then they have like eight a day. I'm like, so you're just having a, a bucket of cream every day? I know. It's crazy. My buddy worked on a Michael Bay movie and he said he was the, I don't want to put this out in the world, but he said he, he had to have a, Two espresso shots, bone dry, uh, something milk, and Weird. two two raw sugars. Bone dry something. Give that a goog. Bone dry mm. coffee. I can't remember how the, the term out, but he's, he says it all the time when I see him. Bone dry cappuccino. Bone dry cappuccino with two espresso shots and two sugars. Bone dry has no steam milk between the foam and the coffee layer. It's just a thick foam layer on top of it. Man, famous people are weird. Yeah, they really want their thing. I just am like, coffee, just get me... And people are like, I, I don't know, I'll just drink it black, then it's fine. Yeah. I'll put a little milk in usually, but like, Same. who gives a shit? I know, but I think part of it is just, let me just see if you are listening, and if you give a fuck enough to do what I said. How important am I, kind of thing. Or, or some of those dudes are just really picky, I think. I think they're like... Some of these people that made it to a crazy level are obsessive about every detail. Yeah. And that's another thing they're obsessive about. But that's what's great about being a comedian. <laughs> Even if you get to... I'm sitting there with Colin Quinn and Jim Norton last night before uh, when Nate was going on. And Colin Quinn was... Everything Norton said, he was like, shut up. <laughs> uh, you know, And you're like, you need that. And, you know, Norton's a big comic. Yeah. But he'll never get to this bone-dry cappuccino place because... He'll have Colin Quinn's voice in his head going, bone dry? Who do I think I am? Fucking Frank Sinatra? It is good to have friends' voices in your head making fun of you for being a piece of shit. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't you have that? Every time I'm at a cool clothing store, I'm in the dressing room, and I just hear Ari, you know, going, what the fuck? Keith, yeah, you can't wear that stupid. You think I can pull that off? You need a combination of, like, a support system, but also, like, ball busting. Yes. You need people that are, like, have your back, but also... Will like be like you're a fucking idiot, right? Keep you in check and balances. You but, need both. Yeah, there's something about I don't know. I fucking lost what I was gonna say. I had something. Well, you need a little fun every now and then. Every now and then, buy that leather jacket or whatever. Yeah, no. Look, we're, we're on stage every night. We should look presentable, but there, you do need that voice. Yeah, keeping you down a little. I think there's something about also L. A. Or, or or cities that are more isolated. Well, you just don't. That's true. It's what, what are you going to get ball busted over speakerphone in your Corvette? <laughs> it's like you gotta you gotta be around people, and because cities, you know, like New York, are so densely populated, like right. you're on top of each other. So you do. I mean, I said fuck you to a guy today on the street. Oh, there you go. I mean, like, was that you, the bike? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you and he said it back. I mean, we cursed at each other, and it was like, all right. I mean. For better or worth, wor worse. I, I fucking can't speak. For better or worse, we're kind of like stuck in this, you yeah, know, with our neighbors, yeah. And that's you're gonna have the good and the bad. Then, L. A. You're just you're in your car too much. It's you don't too have that ball busting completely. Yeah, you're in your apartment. Then you're in your car listening to what you want to listen to with your exact climate. Then you go to your whatever work, or you might work from home. You're never amongst the masses. Uh, even New York, New York will keep you. It's all masses. Well, you're right. In L.A., it's like you're in your car. Welcome to Fresh Air with Terry Gross. Yeah, yeah. In New York, in New York, you're on the subway. Some guy goes on, "Shut the fuck up!" Right. Just some crazy guy screaming. By the way, there's a type of uh, of <laughs> of whatever fentanyl, whatever drugs people are on the street. There's a type that makes you like. A, there's like the conspiracy theory batch. Have you seen that? I saw a guy in the street just like muttering. He's like espionage. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, I've seen that. You guy. got the, the fucking. You got the bad. Yeah. I feel like even if you get sober, you're going to be annoying. Right. right you're like one right. of those. Yeah. Even if you get sober, best case, he's like, he's like, oh fuck, he he cleaned up his act. You're like, what's he doing? Mostly on Reddit. He's, Mostly you know. on Reddit. Talking about Epstein yeah. <laughs> killing himself. But yeah, but even L.A. They have the all. They have more homeless than us, but they got them all in one spot. Yeah. Whereas our hobos are peppered throughout the city. You can catch a hobo in the Upper West, Port Authority, <laughs> Wall Street. We're all over. They're like landmines. <laughs> you can't you can't uh, dodge one. L. A. They you know they're coming because there's like a tent and they like pop yeah, out. You're like, all right, the they, set up, they set up camp here. Right. Yeah. yeah. New L. A. Is like 
uh, you know, Kurt Russell escaped from LA, yeah. right? And then, and then New York is more just like, all right, they've integrated. They're among. Yeah, yeah. It's more like Frogger. Like, yeah. oh, there's one over here. There's one over there. There, you're like Skid Row. Done. Stimulation. Yeah, there's yeah. tons of stimulation. But I think you're right. I think you you take the good with the bad. You need to fuck you every now and then. And uh, it's good. It's it's yeah. good for you. Like I'm mad in the moment, but then a lot of times I realize more and more like when I'm mad in the moment, it's going to lead to a bit. Like, discomfort is, I think, actually good for your life. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Had, I had that moment on the flight recently. You ever that moment on the flight where you land and then you're just on the runway? Yeah. And you're mad, cause it's, but it's fucking funny. Uh, it is funny, but at the if you, time, if, you're like, Ugh. Of course, but when you take yourself out of it, you're like, it's funny that I just landed from Portland, Oregon. Yes. And we're here, and yes. I can't move. Like you, have you to, can't move. You have to distance yourself enough yes. to be like, this is a funny thing. That's true. Once you're in the cab, you're like, it's funny, but. Right, right, right. No, that, that's a good point. Oh, I had something. You brought something up, and it made me think of something. Yeah, you got all the way across the uh, the country, and now you're I'm drinking Salacuses now. Do it, do it. Just fuck him. Yeah, well, you know he's not here. Snooze, you lose. <laughs> oh, I can't remember my Portland point, but I lost it. But yeah, something about something about. Uh, but this is what this is what New York does to you. One time, I was in the way of the door or something. I was like really into a pod on my earbuds, and uh, this big guy at the end of the car goes, "Hey, curly hair, move!" And I was like. <laughs> Oh, geez, sorry. I didn't know all these people were mad at me. I was, like, so in the in my own head. But even somehow curly hair hurt my feelings. I have curly hair. I'm fine with curly hair. But just the guy going, hey, curly hair. I was like, I was like oh, that kind of hurt a little. But that's what the, that's what a, a intent can do or tone can you were do. De- you were ema- you were demasculated. I mean, there's, like, a moment where you're like, there's more to me than that. Yes, yes, But exactly. this guy doesn't know that. Yeah, and in in hindsight, he could have been like, hey, homo, hey, white boy, hey, pussy, hey, queef. White boy wouldn't have hurt as badly, though. Yeah, I don't love white boy. I, yeah, yeah, I guess. I that, grew up with white boy. Well, in that connotation, it's negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess there's nothing good. But I am a white boy. Hey, so. buddy. Buddy's not buddy's bad. Buddy's not bad. Buddy's not bad. But even with the right tone, Buddy's like, oh, shit. Oof, Buddy can suck. Yeah, you yeah. You have that guy, oh, I used to have a guy who was like, hey, Buddy. I was like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. You feel no. wet after someone says. <laughs> yeah. Not the good kind of wet, like fucking. That's true. You're like, ugh, the w- Buddy. Yeah, I don't love that. Yeah, but curly hair sucks. I know, and, and there's nothing wrong. I'm not ashamed of my <laughs> hair. Curly would have been worse. Curly's worse. Hey, curly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Hey, Curly. Why is Curly bad? Because he didn't even have time to say hair? Yeah. Yeah. Curly hair. (laughs) That's true. I'm trying to think like things that would hurt if someone yelled. Well, if you were like, hey, Mexican is way worse than hey, Mexican guy. Neither you don't want to say that to anybody, but like be like, "Hey Mexican, hitting move!" Them, hitting them with a group is is rough, and that, yeah, that, yeah, that's like fighting words almost. But I think this guy was somewhat trying to be efficient, yeah, and and cordial, like, "Hey, you with the curly hair," but he just said, "Hey, curly hair." But at at the time, I was still like, "Ah, oh, that would, that stung a little," but he was he's not wrong, so that's fucking funny. It's something about it. It the was wh- funny. <laughs> Later, I realized that was funny. Having to get people's attention. I mean, yeah. I had I had one. This is a peeve. Man, we're, we're peeve heavy this week, aren't we? It's been a while since it's been just me and Mark. So Yeah, we're getting it all out. I had a guy. You ever have the guy, like, say what's up to you mm-hmm. um, at, at a show? And you're like, yeah, what's up? How are you? And, 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 you, and then you see him again a few blocks later. Oh, and they're just, like, yeah. walking with you. And you're like, is this guy going to fucking walk into my lobby? I know, I it's know. Weird, just, he's just like, yeah. So I uh, yeah, saw you back there, and you're like, how long is this gonna go? I have this, I have that all the time because I don't know you, right? right. I don't know if you're crazy. Yes, and I'm, we're all fine with the how you doing. Hey, let's chat it up. But it's the what's the shot clock on this? Because this could clock? go for three days. That's, if, what, if, that's what you need. You need an interaction shot clock. Yes, need, a buzzer needs to go off. Totally, like a, like the Oscars speech. We it's need like, a guy to be like, ooh, doo, doo, doo. you know, we need the orchestra to start playing. We need the, eh, and you're like, all right, we're going this way now. Yeah, yeah, right, right, exactly. Yeah. And break. <laughs> all right. We need the blackjack guy to go, you're done with the, uh, with the small talk. Do you gamble at the casinos? I dabble. For me, gambling is like uh, eating pizza at 2 a.m. If I'm drunk, I'm all over it. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to Skank Fest, and you drink all night. You know, everything's a party, and you're staying in a casino hotel. So you get, you're like, I'm going home. I'm going to be a Which good boy. Which casino was it? 
What casino was it? The Golden Nugget. So oh, wow. not even a good casino. Yeah, but that's you know what's good about casinos like that is the gambling's pretty cheap. That's true. They got some cheap tables. That's there. true. Like Vegas Vacation, it was like uh, fifty cents for a uh, what is it? <laughs> Paper rock scissor game, and then uh, what, what 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 number am I thinking of? Was a game. It was really funny. Oh, but uh, I get out of this strip club. It's four in the morning. I'm like, I'm going to bed before the sun comes up. I'm hammered. I've been doing shots all night. I get to the casino. The two are you garbage guys are at the craps table. And they're like Norman, <laughs> and I'm like, woo. Three hundred dollars. Throw it down. Give me my, my, my big stack of chips. I'm throwing around. I'm tipping the waitress. She's bringing drinks. I'm high fiving people. It was like a montage. I was like Sharon Stone throwing the chips up. Cut to seven a.m. I'm out of money. I owe him two hundred. Now I'm down five, and I'm still awake. Cut to seven a.m. You're in the boiler room. You're tied to a chair. <laughs> you're begging for your life. Yeah, heads in a vice. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really, uh, it's really fun. But at a certain point. I hate losing money that I worked for. Of course. It's because I don't, I feel way worse when I lose and I feel good when I win. Yeah. I'm like, well, who cares? I didn't fucking, it, so this true. is all bullshit. And I, it gets to a point when I get drunk where I just, I'm like, fuck it. I throw it all down. Yeah. And that's same. where you're like, oh, wow, I'm dumb. This I is know. Money. This is totally money. And the house always wins. Uh, what feels better than a craps win is a sports win. Because at least you got to sit in the game and you got like a three hour. You do that? That I would, I've done a few times and that's way more fun. Because I'm yeah. sitting in the sports book with eight guys in a leather chair drinking Bud Lights going, oh, go, 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 go. He did it. And so it's a win and a win. You get the money and the game was it's, awesome. I do it a little. It's crazy that the Middle East is on FanDuel now. You can, like, you can pick a side. <laughs> I, I thought it was in poor taste. But uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, I don't really do it, but I should. It's it's fun. And it's also like it makes games you're like kind of into way more fun. Yes. Like the baseball playoffs is fucking fun. I'm in. I'm in. Oh yeah. And it's like they got Jeter now doing the. Uh, oh really? They got him doing the booth, and it's Jeter, A Rod, and Ortiz, and you're like, this Jeez. is good for baseball to have it's those great. names. So and I, we can t- all hear about them spit roasting Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into that talk too. How many of you have been in Madonna? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, it, it's good, and it's and you throw a little money down. I don't do it enough because I actually just like watching, but you're right. It would take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. So I would like, bet with my heart, though. That's the problem. I'm too much uh, of a Knicks fan that I would like. I would fuck up and bet with my heart. It's true. It really makes you judge a team. Like, all right, this guy's wife's pregnant. <laughs> he's uh, He's been drinking a little. He's on a blow charge, you know. So, I was just watching Uncut Gems because it was on TV the other day again, and, like, just so how much good. he knew. Like, yes. like, oh, my God, just to be that level – like that, you know what's crazy? That movie stresses me the fuck out. Oh, it's a yeah. great movie. Talk but about it, tension, but it stresses me out. Yeah, and it's, it's not me, and it's not even a real character. But I'm I know. stressed out. But that was that's the, a hat off, hat tip to the filmmaking, the Safety brothers. They're amazing. Amazing with the the buzzer, and then they letting him in. He's like, hey, the door's not working. All that shit just compounding. Amazing. How scary, uh, Bogosian is. Yes, that? yes. And uh, Reggie, is it Reggie Miller? Not Reggie Miller. Garnett. Garnett. Yes. He's great in that movie. He's great. The guy's wife is, or the girlfriend's fucking some dude. He's got so much shit going on. It's it's great. Just that that type of line must be so stressful because there's people like that who exist who just lie to the point where you're like, how do you find? We know some of those types of people. Sure, in showbiz, sure. obviously, but like their whole life is just like. They, I know. I would be stressed all the fucking time if I just imagine like just lying to everyone. Oh, just like this is worth this. Don't worry, the money's everything. coming. Yeah, everything. Everything. Don't the money's those like people we've worked with. Like, yeah, we're like, we're yeah. like the checks in the mail. Yeah. And you're like, I don't think people do that anymore. I know. I think they just wire it. They're like, it's in the fucking mail. I've gotten some DMs where they're like, I bought your merch. It never showed up. And I'm like, whoa, really? I feel so bad. I'm like, how long's it been? They're like, I got it yesterday. I'm like, well, it's mail. <laughs> give it two weeks at least and then DM me. You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I thought you were going to come to my house with a bat, you know? But yeah, people get uh, people get worked up. You start to realize why companies now, you can't even call them. Everything's automated. They're like... If you'd like assistance, try our website. And you're like, what the fuck? Let me just talk to somebody. But it's people are too f- nutty, I think. It's hard to talk to everybody. Yeah, people are losing it. Yeah. I, I think every once in a while, you ever get like a person on the phone and they're like, and you're like in a bad mood, but they're crazy and you're like, I, I, this ain't going anywhere. No, no. It's just two heads button. 
Because you get, I mean, some of those people are like so understanding. Like Louis had that great bit. Remember, like, like I don't want this oh. woman in India to do my airline call. I like, I want some fucking fat woman from Texas. Yes. Yeah. Hi, are you sugar? <laughs> yeah, you want that lady? Yeah, she doesn't care about my problems. And right. Yeah. Right, right. But uh, it's so true. You just want, you got to get the right person. Man, he had some fucking, oh, yeah. He had some classics. Classics. I actually saw him yesterday walking. I saw the movie and he was walking through the village. I, I haven't seen him forever. He looked amazing. Like, really? He, he was like thin. He had a cool outfit on. He had like a corduroy green jacket with boots and he had Lennon glasses on, like the circular ones. I was like, who are you? Yeah, he dresses kind of cool. Yeah, he had a hot lady with him too, I might say. Yeah, it's funny when you see those guys, they're kind of like, Especially in that they're in that period of their lives where they're just like like all the fashion stuff kind of comes together. Yeah. You see like Louie or like Chris Rock, you're like, that's a cool fucking jacket. Rock I know. Somewhere. A little you know? little moolah goes yeah. a long way. And yeah. he was he seemed centered. He was like, Hey, how are you? Man, I haven't seen you in a while. And I was like, Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> Cause anybody he kisses doing you that. on both cheeks. Yeah. You're like, what the fuck yeah. is Yeah, he's French now. Yeah, he's but he looked great, and uh, he was in a great mood. And I, I was like, I just saw the Scorsese. He's like, it's great, right? It's great. He got all into it. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Couldn't wait to get out of there. I wish I liked him more. I didn't hate it. I just was like, I I, I just wish he went a different way with it. But, yeah, yeah. But I also love Scorsese, and I love his passion. Like, did he, did he come on before the screen, right? He comes on before oh, the movie. Oh, yeah. I love how much he pours into it but 100 percent, and i do think in his old age because what is he 80 80 he's 80 so i think in his old age as you get older and kind of more relaxed and low-key his movies have you know like like the irishman is so long and drawn out and that's this my is point it's scary. like it's weird that they're now all so long i know because i think it's like almost like an old person your stories get longer yes, exactly. and exactly but like that's not a good thing. No, you, no. I, my grandpa was a better storyteller in his 70s than he was at 88. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good like, point. You lose that edit button, I think. Well, yeah, it's like a Biden speech, you know? <laughs> it's a little over here, a little over there. It's the same thing. Yeah, you're, you're right. With the age comes the longer story, the more boring story, and he's a legend more and more, so you're getting less nose. That's a good point. So maybe the edit button is a little less frequent. Yeah, I don't know. It's, his editor's old too, Delma Shoemaker or whatever right. her name is, Shoemaker, who's great. Yeah, but legend. They age together. Is, like, it, is it top five Scorsese for you? It's not for me. Top five. Well, now we got to do top five. Yeah. But uh, well, you got Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, uh, Goodfellas. Hard not to put those three automatically in. That's four. Wait, what was it? Taxi Driver, Raging Bull, Goodfellas. And uh, Casino's not my five. Oh, wait. I, I guess you're right. That is three. Um, what else? What else? You got Casino, Gangs in New York, Departed. I love The Departed. Mean like, just in terms of In terms of rewatch factor, The Departed's fucking incredible. I love Cape Fear. I love Aviator. I watch Cape Fear. Cape Fear's got crazy good rewatch Great. value, too. Great. Talk about tension. Tension, and it's like, Color it's kind of body. funny and dark. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, I, I, this so one's many. a hard one to add humor to because it's such a morbid. Yes, but story. he always punches in a little bit of humor. Uncut gems. No, that's he's not... a producer. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, we got to go director. Wolf of Wall Street's pretty good. Wolf of Wall Street's great. Yeah, that was like his last. I feel like banger. Well, that was like a. You were talking about like slower pace. That was fast pace. Yeah, that's true. I dude, I love Shutter Island, but I don't. It's not in my top. No, but I do love it. Taxi Driver might be number one in my mind, or or Raging Bull is is amazing. God. Think, hard not to put Goodfellas one. Also, dude, it, I wouldn't say it's one of his best, but it's hard for me not to put After Hours in my After top Hours. Five. I love that movie. Amazing. That's like so unlike him too. Yeah, King of Comedy's great. That's Cape a Fear great is one. great. Yeah, After Hours. God, he's got so many. Yeah, he's one of the greats. One of the greats. So I had a weird, uh, a weird. I know we got to start wrapping this up, maybe, but I got I love color of money. He's got yeah. a weird. I had a weird talk with my agents. We had like a big Zoom meeting. Yeah, and I'm always that's always terrifying to me. We're like, why? We have this guy from production. We have this guy from the movie side. This guy from the book side. And you're Nick Nusifor, All these people, and you're like, oh, I wonder what this is about. I thought it was gonna be some like tour stuff, and they're like. I don't know how much I'm supposed to divulge, but they're like, "Hey, you're 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 doing great right now. You're selling tickets. You're on Netflix. Da da da. What's the next thing? What what do you want?" And I know we're working on a movie, but like, yeah. 
I want to just be like, I've made it. This is all I wanted was to do theaters, sell tickets, write new material, put clips up, get a, get a little Instagram buzz, whatever. Like, I'm good. But yeah. they made a good point. They're like, but look at these older comics. You don't, you can't do the road when you're 59. I mean, you can, but not like this. You're out every weekend. You're hustling. Yeah. So they're like, when that's you... What, that's what you're talking about, trying to stay. Like, yeah. I know people are like, you guys aren't in shape, but like, you know... We're better than we could be. For having, yes. for having a drinking podcast. Yes. Like so many comics died just from being out of shape, not just yeah. drugs. Patrice and like John Panette, yeah. Louis Anderson. So like yeah, they're like when you are that age, you're gonna want to have this project that you can just work on and like have a voiceover or direct or create. And I'm you like, got a great yeah. voice for voiceover. I would love to do voiceover. But yeah. Also it just seems easy. It's easy. You know, I did like a little bit on 10 year old Tom that I did like five episodes, but just like bit parts and they were fun as hell. It was yeah. easy. And he riffs like that's the thing is like I hope that we just get more opportunities creatively. But I feel the same way as you. I, I when I did that uh, Letterman thing, he was like, what's next? I was like, what do you mean? What's next? this is I made it. I'm, I'm, I'm talking, talking to, to you, David Letterman. Exactly. So um, and even this we get to hang out and talk shit. And it's a big podcast, you know? I know. I mean, it's this is great. And I'm with you. For me, what I want is more free time to write jokes. That's like, how that's, I feel. I just am like, I want to do less, like, cut out the unnecessary shit. Yeah. I want to work on my act. I, I want more time because we are on the road so fucking hard. And that means you neglect stuff at home. So when you're home stuff piles up yes. and that's the time you need to recharge but they're like you weren't here two days you gotta do this this and this and, yeah and uh, I never really rested in my career I never really like I, you're the same way we yeah. would land and go straight to the comedy cellar cause, yes because yes. we like it yeah but but then they're like what about this TV show and you're like how am I gonna fit writing a show in like we were working on this movie we have a, a producer guy we have writer guy we have us I think the movie's gonna be good man I think so too I don't wanna give too much away cause it's gonna be a long process but like I think it's in a good place the script is already amazing yeah and we haven't even punched it up yet yeah and it's already funny so yeah, we'll... it, we gotta make edits and stuff but like damn I'm I'm pumped I, yeah I think like same. you and me in a buddy comedy is like it's gonna be fucking easy and fun and yeah and we Nothing's know all the easy. comics, but sure, we'll, but, we're, we're taking it one, we're chipping away, as they say. And we got the whiskey. The problem is, you know, we had that whiskey interview today. That was, oh yeah, <laughs> that was stressful. Yeah, yeah. This full, guy full, really, what did he call disclosure. him? A slasher? He called him a, an old slasher. He was like a Texas, you know, shit kicking hard ass guy. He was like, I never heard of you, boy. I'm like, I don't know. I've never heard of you either. Yeah, he, you seem successful. Is it, yeah, I mean, you're doing great. We're doing great. Let's it is be weird when a guy takes a meeting with you. Goes, I've never heard of you, and you're like, you didn't Google us before oh, the yeah. meeting. Good point. You know? Yeah. You ever heard of Netflix? <laughs> huh? Tonight Show? He, he perked up when when we, when we were like, well, we've done these shows, yeah, and stuff, and he was like, oh. But yeah, he. Uh, I feel like he was throwing around whiskey industry terms just to make us look stupid. Probably. We're like, yeah, we're not. It worked. Yeah, we look stupid. Yeah, he's like, "Where are you out of?" And we're like, I "Think Indiana." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had an agent on the call, and he was just like, "Well, that was rough." And we're like, "Yeah, yeah, that wasn't good." And it was eleven. I was wearing boxers under the under the screen. It was. I just woke up. So yeah, it was. It was a it was very professional guy in a button down and then a couple of comedians. And a couple of guys with like dim lights yeah. on Zoom. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah. sucked. But whatever. I mean we still might. Yeah, he took the meeting and Bodega Cat. I bet he Googled us at this point. So Maybe. that helps. <laughs> Just watches our shit. Not for me. That, I bet that's the type of guy where he's like, not for me. Probably, yeah. He feels more like a like a Ron White guy or maybe a Nate Bargazzi. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. But you live, you learn, and we'll we'll figure it out. Somebody's gonna jump on on this thing. Bodega Cat, man, we need New York distribution for the love of God. Please, clubs are willing to have us. They've already agreed to it. Uh, and bars, we got lots yes. Of <clears throat> so yeah, that was the tough thing. But I see their point. They're like, you're gonna wish you had jumped on the iron when it was hot in 20 years. I think I we like, are though. I think that, that them being on it means you will. And and right and. Uh, I, and tr it's true. D d w this touring right now is not sustainable for life. Of course. But my thing is, and you've had this too, I've pitched 
I don't know, 17 shows at this point. And again, pitching with no juice, just yeah. going, hey, I got an idea. Will you take a meeting? And they go, sure, even though they're just filling out a quota, you know, for they're doing work by taking a meeting with me. They're not actually going to make anything. Yeah, they, can you do a 4.30 p.m. on a, on a Friday? Yeah. You're like, yeah. It feels important to you. In, in Santa Monica, where you'll take two hours to get there, then four hours to get home. Do you remember that? Do you remember, oh, like, yeah. you remember going to pitch shit in person? All the time. You Holy lose your shit. whole day yeah. on two pitches. But then I've tried that, never gotten anything. Then I've had 8,000 auditions, never gotten one, yeah. not one. So it just it gets a little frustrating when they're like, what about this movie? And I'm like, I'd love to be in that movie, but I'm not going to get the audition. So I know. Also, it's like I feel like the shit we're going to get is when people are like, I like you. You should be in my thing. That's it. As opposed to showing up blind and they're like, oh, we went with uh, with Johnny Depp instead. Yeah. Like, you had me competing against Johnny Depp? Exactly. Exactly. It was I for know. guy who fucks crazy woman, too? Of course right. he's going to get it. Right. I wouldn't get a role for a Mark Norman type. <laughs> I could go in for that. And they'd be like, we're going to go with Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> It's so true. Yeah, Louis Black had that story about he he lost out in the part of Louis Black. Oh, really? So, that's yeah. right. That's right. But yeah. that's what it is. I mean, like we're going against these like fucking people who they approach acting the way we approach comedy. It's going to be a tough yeah process. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, you are striking while the while the iron's hot. You you're restless. I think it, it's we will set up the next chapter. Sure, but it's like that Hedberg joke where they're like, "You're funny. You're good at comedy. Can you farm?" You know, like, how, yeah. what other things can you do? Like, well, I did this. That was the whole point. But yeah, but you, when you were pitching stuff, you didn't have the juice you have now. You got people who are going to want to make stuff with you now. And uh, the the thing is, now, do you ever think you'd be at a point where, like, if someone was like, I want to cast Mark Norman as, like, the wacky neighbor on this sitcom, and you'd be like, I don't think I have time. Yeah, that's now, crazy. If you want if you're going to make a show, it's your show. That's true. And that's a good place to be in where you're like, I'm good over here. I, I feel comfortable. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm cool with, if this is it, cool. I don't, I hope it's not. I'd like to keep going, but I think uh, this level is great. It's, yeah. It's a good level. I love this level. We're working. We're, uh, you know, if we make stuff, it's going to be this stuff. If we... Any, we love stand up so much that if we're going to take a break from stand up, it better be fucking incredible. Of course, and that's a good place to be in. That is a good place to be in, but I don't even know what that thing is yet. And they keep going, "What's the thing you want to work on?" And I'm like, "I don't even know." So they're like, "What are you passionate about?" I'm like, "Stand up." They're like, "But what's the project?" I'm like, "I'll maybe I'll think of it, but I haven't it'll thought come of it to yet." You, you don't, it'll I mean, come. like this is a new thing, but like maybe it'll be like a fucking weird ass game show that you made. Right. Maybe it'll be. A thing you host. Maybe it'll be a sitcom. Maybe it'll be, yeah. you know, a talk show. There, there's so many. Maybe not a talk show because we already do this. So you don't, sure. you don't, you might be just like, you know, that might be boring to you. I mean, also, what is what is a talk show anymore? I know. Dude, the podcast is a talk show now. And a podcast is way better. You can get in there. You can get real. Whereas, you know, a Fallon, you, you got eight minutes. And you got to tell a silly story that's been pre-approved. He laughs. And then the lights go on. I will say, though, I do kind of like the interview with the crowd. I like, I like the, the crowd. I like the idea that you have to make – it makes you on your shit. That's true. That there's a crowd that you have to get – it's also like – I don't know. It's almost like a sport. You have to like fucking make it – like let me make sure – let me choose this angle. Let me yeah. leave. Let me try to like – let me cut off this party saying and try to sure. slip in a joke. There's something cool about that too. Oh, yeah. That's a skill in itself and that is – pretty awesome like those bill burr panel moments were some of the great so and like louis the, and louis too and there's montages norm. norm oh my god norm made it like an art but yeah there's montages of bill burr just back to back to back on the couch killing with basically with like bits he's working on i but, followed one of them on on conan once and i remember it was a caitlin jenner bit that i was like wow that's such a good take he was uh it was like a pretty it was like progressive, but also not progressive at the same time. Mm. And I was like, wow, what an amazing way to go both ways. It was like almost like he was saying like good for her, but also like give me a minute. Yes. And I was like, yes. that's a very fair response. Yeah. He's like if a guy had a beard for 20 years and walked in without the beard, you'd be yeah. like, what the hell, man? You yeah. changed. Yeah. it was Great analogy. It was a great segment to follow because the crowd was in stitches and you're like, I, I'm getting to follow Bill Burr. Yeah. How cool is that? And Bill Pretty Burr awesome. just crushing. Yeah, in the height of his his uh, panel moment. He he had a couple years of panel, which was like epic every time. And Conan, uh, I don't think Conan gets enough credit for being like not just one of the funniest 
people, but like maybe the best straight man. Maybe he could really bring it out of you, and he would poke a little to make you prove your point, and that made it even better. Like he'd go, I don't know about that, Bill. Exactly. And Bill's like, What? Are you fucking nuts? Da, da, da. And then now he's worked up, so it was kind of brilliant the way he, he knew, got it. He out knew of how to play contrarian in the right way. Yeah, he knew how to. He almost became like the proper guy. He almost yes. became like the, the authority, the know? voice and of reason. Where he'd be like, Bill, but that can't be like yeah. the guy. He almost made it like uh, an office situation. Yeah, right. Where the guy's like, you shouldn't, but that's not something you should. Say. And then he kept. But, and, but that it. keeps getting the exactly. guy to go, exactly. and you're like, "Fuck, this is." What if he had never said to Norm, "Do something with that, you freak"? And Norm's like, "B O R E D," <laughs> you know, like we wouldn't have that great line without Conan feeding him, like, "Hey, think of something now." But he said it in the way so it made it natural. Like he made him look like a superhero. Yes, by feeding him that way. Exactly. It, it, that's the greatness of Conan, just knowing how it's like being a point guard. Where you're just He's, like, yes. I'm getting you. Like the way Magic Johnson would like get you to your spot. Right. He's like, I'm right. throwing the ball here. Get to your spot. He would do that with jokes. He's Pippin. Yeah, yeah. He, he just knew. No, nah, he was a small forward, but he, yeah. but he's it he was an important part. I, assisting. Let's just go he's with assisting. He's assisting. Yeah. <laughs> Forget but, it. He's rolling. But you know, uh, <laughs> Animal House. <laughs> but but you know, it's like it's a hard thing to do. Carson was great at it. Yes, but yes, totally. To, to make someone look that good, you really need to be a sophisticated comedy mind. Oh yeah. Whereas David Letterman, who's also good in his own way, he was all he had the ball. He was his own, you know, three point shooter or whatever, Steph Curry. But he that's why comics would come on and kind of bow to him. Yeah, he, he was the number one. He was like the alpha. But with Conan, he's a he's a feeder. And it's I almost like different. the feeder better. It's different, yeah. Um he really yeah, he really made you shine. It was it was a tough thing to do. It's also tough for it's really it's an amazing thing for a comedian to completely just rid themselves of their ego yeah. and let you shine. Yeah, to, but it's for the good of the show. Of ultimately. course. Of but course, yeah. but comics don't want to That's be true. The, to not be the funniest one. Totally. Totally. But you have to pull back sometimes and let someone go. Yeah, make, yeah. Make the segment go. But it also has to be a believable natural because Fallon, who's great and funny, but he just laughs and laughs. So that's kind of his way of being like, keep going. Keep, right, I'm right. encouraging you. But Conan did it in such a smooth way that it looked like it looked real. Right. You know, I fucking miss that. I miss those segments. He still has his podcast and there's you see glimpses of it every that's now and true. then. But it's not the same without an audience. Audiences really are. They pull it out of you a little more. That's why sports are in front of an audience. You get the, you know, home team, rah, rah. That gets you going. I mean, how many, we've all seen Hoosiers, you know, slow clap. Here we go. The Watch guy's it. on his feet. Come on, Williams. Get out there. Hackman, dude. Hackman. Uh, by the way, RIP. Uh, he Bert, died? Burt Young. Oh, jeez. Who the hell's Burt Young? Are you kidding me? I know Burt Ward. Gonna feel, you're going to feel bad when Bert you see Kreischer. his picture. You know uh, Burt Reynolds. Rocky oh, back to school. Wow. Sopranos. I didn't know he died. Yeah. I thought he died years ago, to be honest. That's but so did I. <laughs> but uh, I think that's Wallace Shawn on the bottom, or is that him? That's him, but he turned oh, yeah. into Wallace Shawn. <laughs> no, that's not what you want to hear. No. I thought you were Wallace Shawn. He's a fatter Wallace Shawn, but he's the ultimate schlubby character actor. He's so good. I, I love the line in Back to School when, he go, when Dangerfield goes, uh, he goes, Lou. Uh, he goes, girls. This is Lou. Lou. These are girls. <laughs> yes, yes. Look at that! Wow, that guy had never paid for a drink at a bar. I guarantee you. No way. He walked in. They go, "Holy shit!" It's the guy from Rocky. O old man Bacala in Sopranos. Remember, he does oh, that yeah. one last hit. He's right. Got the, he's got the. <sighs> Ooh. Oh yeah! Wow, what a career! Fucking legend. He's him with Nicholson on the right. Is it? Is that uh, Chinatown, I assume? Wow. Damn, I forgot he's in Chinatown. What a career. Burt right. Young. Now, how many podcasts out there are talking about Burt Young? That's all I'm saying. We, we got love, range. We love movies and, uh, you know. Yeah, he deserves his due. Full stop. <laughs> <laughs> Burt Young, clap, clap, was one of the <laughs> finest clap, clap actors uh, that we've ever had. <laughs> 
Yes. You there guys, you, go. you guys are the best. Thanks for listening. But see us on the road, Mark. Where are you going to be? I'm all over the place. New tour dates announced. Mark Norman Duck, Comedy dot com. You don't say tour rolls on. We're cooking. We're going to Tampa. We're going to Cleveland. We're going all of Denver's. We got a second show added. All kinds of stuff. The Beacon Theater in January. Come on out. Tickets are moving. Uh, see you in New Orleans for Thanksgiving, or is that over? No, that's, that's oh okay, out. great. Santa Rosa, wherever the hell that is, that'll be fun. And uh, yeah, all kinds of stuff. Back in New England, going to Miami, going to Jacksonville. You name it. Burt Kreischer cruise this weekend. I might die. Who knows? We'll see. I'm you sorry all. to bail on that one. Though. Oh, everybody pulled. Everybody pulled out of that. It was I'm out too much. You, Whitney, Tim Dillon. <laughs> Whitney bailed too. Yeah, Whitney. Uh, what? Chris D bailed. I mean, it, it's oh my be, god, it's me and Sean Patton in a lifeboat just swimming. I, I'm, I'm dying. It's like the Titanic. I should have. I should have gotten out. Brisbane, Melbourne, Ooh, Adelaide, Australia. and Sydney. I'm all over Australia, baby. Hope to see you out there. Got Vegas at the Wind, December 2nd. Tampa, December 8th. Fort Myers, December 9th. And I'm going to hit some comedy clubs again. I'm back in the clubs for a minute to gear up for the special in, uh, in Boston in March. So we got Buffalo, Springfield, Madison, Philly, Dania Beach, Omaha, Dallas, <laughs> Oklahoma City, Irvine, Salt Lake City. And then we got the fucking special, baby. Two of them already sold out and probably more by now. So wow. see your asses on the fucking road Hell let's yeah. go we love you get some and bodega cat get folks. some bodega cat we're working on this guys it, we're, this is not our business and we a lot of it's been put on us and we're busy motherfuckers so we're yes, trying we're trying folks we're hustling we're doing what we got to do and uh yeah thanks for listening we got shirts we got sweaters we got glasses get on it we'll see you in hell love Thank you, you guys Sunday.